Welcome to another episode of the Jimmy Rex Show. And today I'm here with a friend of mine, Jason Harward. And we're sitting here in his new office building. Congratulations, you just moved in here, right? Yeah, I just moved in like two weeks ago. Excellent, okay. So Jason and I, I, I the reason I wanted to interview Jason, I met you last year. Um, we were part of a group that was invited to go on a private jet to the Jazz Clippers playoff game. And you caught my attention right away because you showed up in a sickest Lamborghini that I've ever seen in my life and your license plate said dropout and so you were a high school dropout high school dropout yep. okay and uh and I actually wanted to you just your whole story I've gotten to know you pretty well now we became pretty good friends here and but for people that don't know your story I'm actually going to read your introduction I've never done this but I want to read your introduction from your website because I think it's hilarious and I think it really explains who you are and then we're going to kind of dig into that a little bit i want people to kind of be able to hear your story of how you went from high school dropout to starting and now owning multiple million dollar businesses sound good yeah sounds good all right so the introduction i'm just going to read says most of my introductions start because of the lamborghini sick car bro thanks i like the wheels what do you do i sell stickers which is funny because that was our exact conversation that we had when we first met that's literally my lead in everywhere. Yeah. They want to know what I do, and I tell them I sell stickers. Yeah, no, and I was literally, I was trying, I was like, okay, you either sell pallets of stickers at a time, or there's something else going on here. Uh, anyway, to, to continue on, it says, at this point, the mass has fallen into two categories, those that do the math and those that don't. I sell product online. Yes, I did Amazon when it was cool two years ago. No, I don't use Shopify. At some point, if this is becoming a real conversation, they ask about the dropout sticker. You dropped out of college, high school. Shock is the usual reaction, or they get awkward. Here's the thing. I started selling items found by garage shopping in high school. That and the other recreational activities I was enterprising in resulted in my dad pulling me from the school and my mom's house to go live with him under house arrest. And we'll kind of stop there. That is a very fascinating introduction, my man. <laughs> so I guess I'll start with uh, get to the heart of this thing a little bit. You said that you started selling items found by garage shopping in high school. Obviously, that means you were uh, stealing people's items and selling them. Yep. And you were selling them online, or how was that going? Yeah, I mean, I stole them. I, I, I sold them on eBay usually. Um, it was pretty low key. I, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a bonehead a bonehead thing to do, but uh, yeah, that's what Well, no, you're just a high school kid, yeah, right? I, this is what you were doing. Young and dumb. Yeah. And so your dad caught you or you got caught or what happened there? Like you said that your dad eventually kicked you out of the house. So what happened there? So my mom actually kicked me out of the house okay. and uh, made me go live with my dad. Um, they actually, I don't even know they ever found out about garage shopping. Sorry, parents, if you're just barely <laughs> finding out about this. It's but always kind of fun though, like when you let your parents in on some stuff. I know like right before <laughs> I left for my LDS mission, we we're all sitting there and we let my parents know of like seven or eight things that I'd done, you know, from blowing up mailboxes not things i'm proud of you're just a kid yeah. you're just doing things right and yeah. anyway it was just kind of funny to be able to share it without any fear of the repercussion but yeah, yeah. yeah. so i think the biggest reason why my uh, my dad pulled me out is because he found out i was smoking weed um so i i smoked a lot of weed in high school and kind of just didn't care about anything um and and i what's funny is i don't even know if i go into it on there but uh most of what I sold online wasn't, even at that stage, wasn't stuff I got from garages. It's actually mostly stuff I got from the dollar store. Hmm. So I'd go to the dollar store all the time in high school and like like sophomore year, before I even had a credit card, and like I'd go buy stuff and then sell it on eBay for like 10, 15 bucks. And I thought it was like the bee's knees that I was, you know, making a hundred bucks a day selling. Yeah, you just had a nice little niche where you discovered at an early age the art of buying something cheap and then selling yeah. it to the masses for more, right? Yep. Okay, and so that conversation came um, where your mom kicked you in with your dad. What was that conversation like? Oh man, uh, you know I don't remember the exact words it was, but I mean I just remember the the, the very very high level of disappointment. I guess I think that's what that really gets you down is and got me down is that uh, I was definitely making stupid decisions and and now I'd been caught. So and, and so how what changed? Like how did it turn around for you? I mean you were in this life or whatever, just kind of smoking weed, not really giving much of a care to what you were doing. So yep. what changed? Um, you know, I, I, I ended up going up there, I lived with my dad, um, lived with him for like six months and uh, we, didn't, we didn't really talk. I couldn't do anything. I didn't go to school. Like, I don't, I don't know if there's an official way to drop out of high school or not, but there's definitely nothing official about what we did. I just, I didn't go anymore. And, and was uh, that junior year or what year did you drop um, out? It, it was the beginning of senior year, I think. Okay. Um, 
I mean, even in school, I wasn't, I don't think I was taking enough classes to graduate. I was <laughs> okay. just kind of doing whatever. But um, uh, yeah, I, what was your question again? No, no, I'm sorry. So your dad um, had that co- tough conversation with you and then you kind of changed your life around a little bit. What what, what kind of it? motivated you to get, to, to move yeah. on to this? Thing? He actually made me go to a training that I, I didn't really want to go to. I was 17, almost 18, um, and basically went in there and kind of, realized all the stuff I've been doing and I got to take a a real hard look at all the results I was actually creating, um, which was really fascinating. Even for somebody so young, I I was still able to to see how my choices were actually affecting me and how they were affecting other people and how um, even even little tiny decisions to do things play or or turn into this huge ripple that turned into other stuff. And uh, actually after, after getting out of that training, there was a second version of it. So I went to that and I really started looking at how I wanted to do things different. And uh, I actually, I don't think I've smoked weed since then. I, I turned 18 in the second one. Can you give us an example of that? Because that's, you know, maybe there's people listening who either have kids that are struggling with the same thing, or maybe they themselves want to make those changes. What were some of the things that you learned in that training? Like, what was it that sparked for you? Man, it, it, it was, it, it's a very, very weird training from, from what most people, what, most what's it called? so it's called uh, the BU training. Okay. Um, my I, my family and stuff that's still into it, um, but it's um, it gives you a chance to look at stuff not just like sit down, take notes, and like sit in the classroom type thing. You actually get to experience stuff, and you get to go through different processes so that you actually see it and remember it. I mean, we're talking uh, twenty or not twenty, fifteen, I think fifteen, fourteen years ago is when I went through it, and I still remember so many pieces vividly. And dude, there's nothing like high school, like I, anybody, you probably can't think of a class and think about all the stuff sure. you learned, but I can go through and like day by day, remember all this stuff because it was an experience that I went through. And, and I mean, I got to see like firsthand people that could give me like feedback on how I was showing up in a way that's like, it's not my dad saying, dude, you're sucking ass at life right now. Stop it. It's, it's somebody that barely knows me. And, and they were able to say, okay, this is, this is why I wouldn't want to be your friend. This is why I wouldn't trust you. This is why, and I, and I got to see all that stuff, and it was majorly eye-opening. Wow, that's fantastic. So I guess you're a dad now. Uh-huh. I've got two kids, is that yeah, correct? two kids. And so how has that affected you as like how you show up as a dad to your children? Man, it, you know, I, I look at what my dad did, and I think that he did the best that he could do. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I feel like uh, when I was younger, I don't think my dad was a very great dad. Um, and so... He still he did the best he could do, and I think that I'm tweaking it in a way that I'm going to do the best that I can do, and I'm going to do it a little bit better than he did, and and that's kind of my thing. So I mean, I, I I try to show up with my kids a little bit more, I, and hopefully get them to where they don't have to make boneheaded decisions to get to the same conclusions that I've gotten to. Um, I mean, obviously their kids they're going to make their own decisions, and I'm fully supportive of whatever they decide to do. Um, but I think that uh, I think that getting them on a process of doing things and seeing how things affect them at a younger age is going to change who they end up being. Well, and I love that idea. It's kind of like, almost like the story of, um, what is it, the the Christmas Carol or whatever, right? Where he gets to go back and see the the how he affects things, his decisions are affecting real lives. Is that kind of like what the training was? They got you to basically peer into the lives of these other people a little bit and see how your actions affect other people, which had a real result. Exactly, exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, I got, I got a real life perspective of, of how I showed up for people and, and how each piece I did reflected. And, uh, and so to even taking that same, that concept and stuff with my dad and, and I can kind of put all that into what I'm doing now. No, that's and, and that's just kind of, I've, I've learned from everything I can possibly think about learning from and, and in return, hopefully I'm being the absolute best that I can be, uh, not just as a dad, but as a, a spouse, as, as a business partner, as, as, uh, I mean, anybody you do business with, um, I just like to be able to show up as somebody that I would want to do business with. No, that's great. I think that's, you know, as long as you, we want to associate ourselves with people that we trust and like, and that people are, usually we associate people like we see the best qualities of ourselves in them. I think that, you know, I think one of the things I was attracted to when we met, like, just like, oh, that guy's a cool guy, was very much right off the bat as we started talking, we got into your story of your business and different things like that, immediately I saw transparency of things that, you know, made you stand out versus other people maybe that I've met along the way or whatever else. So um, speaking of your business story, um, you went from selling stickers then Mm -hmm. uh, to creating these multi-million dollar businesses. 
Um, tell us a little bit. I want to kind of share with the audience that transition and how you got started and then how you grew it to what it is today. Okay. Um, so it actually probably starting back a little bit farther than Please, even yeah, stickers. Yeah. Um, and I think it goes back to the same stuff. I mean, high school, end of high school, I was buying stuff from the dollar store, selling it on eBay. Um, that's where everything kind of started rolling. I started playing, figuring out how how to sell stuff um, and, and realizing that it's more than just take uh, one picture of an item. And I mean, all the basic stuff of, of selling items, when well, I say it's basic, I guess still people don't know, but sure. But I started learning all the way back then and I kind of went through this whole process and then I started a uh, online uh, website where I'd sell car parts and I started getting really heavy into that and I started an automotive shop and I ran that for like five or six years. Um, was it an online automotive shop? No, so I tried, I wanted to sell stuff online because that's what I was passionate about, mm-hmm. but doing that there was a lot of pressure actually because to do that you should have a brick and mortar and if i was going to do a brick and mortar why would i just have a warehouse i'm going to have a whole shop and that was the right thing to do by everyone's you know uh, what anybody else would would expect you'd have to have the shop to, in order to, to do this successfully yeah, sure. so um, i started doing that uh, probably the worst time of my life it was terrible i mean I probably worked 60 hours weeks every week and i probably made the most 25 grand a year Wow. I mean, it was brutal. Wow. Um, like, barely pay bills. I don't know how the freak I scored my wife, but uh, that, that happened at that time. At least you too. know she loves you for the right reasons. That's right. That's right. Um, that or she saw something I didn't see, I guess. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, we ran that, uh, I ran that automotive shop for, like I said, five or, five or six years. And finally, I decided to pull the plug on it. It, just, it was killing me, and, and I wasn't going anywhere. It was brutal. Um, and I uh, went and got a job right after that and got a job for about two weeks and was like, Nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, and so I got a, I got a job uh, selling SEO is what I was selling. Oh, oh that's, that's like the is, worst. When those guys call oh, me for shit. real estate, dude, that's literally like I can't get off the phone fast enough, you know. And yeah. every one of them, I'll say the same thing. Like, you get me on the front page and I'll pay you for getting me there. But don't tell me you're going to get there and they wanted you to pay all this money. And anyway, I think every guy goes through that transition of like, I'm going to go sell SEO, or at least they used to, right? Yep. It was like that shit job that everybody did that nobody wanted to do or whatever. Yeah. And I had, a, I had a real interest in it because I wanted to know how it worked and stuff. And, and as I quickly found out in less than two weeks is that we were selling crap for money and it, yes, was just, it wasn't yeah, good yeah. either way. But um, so uh, from there I ended up, I wanted to quit. Uh, my wife was like, nope, you got to either have a business plan or you have to have another job lined out before you can quit. So it actually started out as a complete joke that I'm going to sell stickers. And I had a sticker machine left over from my automotive shop. And it's just like this piece of crap sticker machine. But I built, uh, drew up this business plan, and uh, obviously I didn't go to school. I don't, I don't know what the official business. I, mean, but I drew out this whole plan, and it was bitching. Like uh, legit business plan to sell stickers, and you basically did it so that your wife wouldn't yeah, give so, you permission. Yeah, so I could to freaking quit, the quit this job. SEO job. <laughs> and so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can probably sell 400 stickers a month, and I had to sell 480 stickers a month just to pay our bills. Um, I sell just the individual stuff. I mean, it was it's not a crazy number. Uh, but at the same time, I never sold stickers before and sure. whatever. So it was, it was kind of random. But I broke it down. Like, I knew exactly how many I had to sell. And and uh, and I, I pitched my wife. And she's like, all right, if this is what you want to do, that's fine. You could do this. So, um, so yeah, I did. And we started, like, I, I want to say it was February 12th, which is insane that I'd actually remember that number. But I am pretty sure that it was February 12th that we started it in 2012. And the remainder of, of February, we sold just over 400 stickers. Wow, in the first month? In the first month. and we uh, Selling them on eBay or where? Mostly eBay, yep, okay. mostly okay. eBay. Um, actually, almost completely eBay. We sold a little bit on, on uh, KSL at the time, but mostly eBay. And uh, so streamlined that. So I figured that out really quickly. I think the following month, the end of the following month, so the end of March, um, I hired my first employee who is now my business partner. Um, he came over, he was still in high school and he was trying to date my wife's sister. Um, that's, that's how you guys got that's connected, how we met. basically. So he came over like on a high school lunch break and, uh, I was like, dude, you should come work for me making stickers. And <laughs> like, what are you doing in high school? Did you need to be selling stickers with me? <laughs> right. Uh, so, so yeah, this is all by, this is all out of my, uh, two bedroom apartment. So, Whoa. so I hired him out that next month working on my two bedroom apartment. Um, then it was like two months later, I hired, uh, my sister-in-law to come work for me out of my two bedroom apartment. So now me and my wife lived out of one bedroom, the front, like the, the living space and the other office were all like sticker making and just stuff. And, 
and everything just like kind of blew up from there. So that fast forward to that December, that first December, we did 32,000 stickers um, in just the month of December. Wow. And so you grew from 400 just 11 months earlier yep. to 32,000 stickers. 32,000 stickers. And so at that point, you knew like, okay, I've got this legitimate. Well, yes, that's what I thought, okay. right? So that's what I thought. This is when, so by the time when I, to sell 32,000 stickers, I didn't sell them. I only sold individually. So I didn't sell like bulk to people. There's no money in that. I don't want to work really hard to sell a sticker and make three cents. I'd rather work really hard and sell a sticker for $3 and make $2. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of worked the whole system the whole way down uh, to December. And I, I, I got on eBay. I was on Amazon, started crushing it on Amazon. And uh, it's the same thing. It's the same feeling I had when I was high school and I was selling stuff. I was like, make a hundred bucks a day. Nobody can touch this. That's how I felt going into that December. I'm like, I'm making money. This is crazy. I'm selling stickers. And then uh, I think it was January, like the very, very beginning of January. So there's like on, on Amazon, they hold your funds for like two weeks at a time and then they release them. And all my funds from Christmas got held and then they shut down my Amazon account that January. And so I was like top of the world to totally effed and, and they, and they held my totally money. shut down your account. They shut what, down my what account. was the reasoning so, for that? So um, they shut my, uh, I, I come to find out that the sticker industry is pretty brutal. Um, and Amazon doesn't want to get in the middle of it. So what happened is I had a competitor say that we were selling, um, selling their stickers, mm. which was not true. It was our stickers. Um, anyways, but Amazon didn't want to get in the middle of it. So Amazon just shut us down. And then they hold your funds for 90 days before they release your funds. And I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. And Amazon has this crazy policies where you can't have more than one Amazon account, period. So your account's shut down, you're done. And so, uh, yeah, we went from like, and how much were you making when you sold the 32,000 stickers that month? I mean, just to give an idea in revenue, what were you doing? Golly. Um, I have no idea. hundred and... Over a hundred grand? Just over a hundred grand, probably. Wow. And so you had three months with all your money's tied up in Yeah, Amazon. it was like 97,000. That's funny. That's, yeah, we had like 97 grand that was tied up. So we had to do more revenue. Anyway, we had like, yeah, like 97 grand that was tied up for three months. So I couldn't pay the employees. I couldn't pay for myself. I was like, what the heck, what are we going to do? And at that point, I had realized that Amazon is the way of the future, not eBay. eBay is great if you're selling used stuff, but there's just not that many people that buying new buying stuff, stuff on, on there. Yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, of the 32,000, I think probably 30,000 of it was on Amazon. Oh, wow. 2,000 was eBay, which was nothing. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I thought we were screwed. So I went through a, a really big fumbling for... Uh, I don't even know, probably three or four months where I was just like, I don't know what we're going to do. This is, uh, so what did you do in that time fun. frame for that three or four months? What were you doing? Uh, mostly probably self pity, but, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I mean, it was, it's important to the story though. I think is people, because like, you know, people see you now driving your, you know, one of the nicest cars in the state of Utah, you've got this beautiful, you know, house and office and everything else. And I think it's easy to, you know, you front row tickets to the jazz and everything else to be like, Oh, Jason's got this huge success with full life. But I mean, those were three or four, sounds like very dark months. And these pitfalls that, I mean, you as an entrepreneur were going through, you know, so you were in there for three, four months, self-pity party. How did, how did you pull yourself out of that or what happened? Yeah, you know, it's, it's when you say that, because I almost disassociate with it, because it, it was it was so painful and it was really hard. And um, to no fault of your own, really. I mean, and, and it is and it isn't. It's my fault that I didn't put more eggs in different baskets. And it's all stuff I've learned now. Sure. But, but. It all came down to the same thing, and, and all it came down to, all, in fact, every time I failed really comes down to how good am I at solving the problem at hand, and that's what it's come down to for me almost every single time I've run into something, and so a few months, a few months of, of my pity party, and I finally decided that, okay, it's time, to, it's time to get this figured out, and that's when I started doing research and figuring out how I can remote IP into other places and get new business entities set it up, and so now I have this crazy network of like, I have to remote into computers so that Amazon doesn't know that it's me. Wow. And I have different IP addresses and different businesses set up in different states. It's really, really ridiculous, the, the loopholes you have to jump through. But it's just loopholes. And and I, like I said, I, after I figured it out, it's just a matter of figuring it out. And so now I know I've had probably three Amazon accounts shut down. Now it's like, doesn't matter to me. I have I have three of them set up already that are like just sitting there waiting for the day the next one goes down. And I'll have it switched over and rolling, and it's not even a big deal. So it sounds like you've had an interesting history with Amazon from day one. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. And Amazon's 
its own beast. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, as a small businessman, you built your business through Amazon, but it also is kind of being known now Amazon, you know, it's taking from a lot of small businesses. So, I mean, is that the future? Is Amazon, do you have to have Amazon as part of your business? Or at this point, is, is it an, a necessary evil? Or So, Amazon is weird. I went through a phase where Amazon was king. And in my mind, there was probably nothing better. And in, in fact, at the time, I think that's probably relatively true. They had so many buyers and their rates were right. There wasn't crazy competition. It was, I mean, the golden era. I think we'll look back on it and be like, oh, if you missed out on that, you missed out. Wow, okay. You know, um, and um, and now I look at it and, and it went from that to, to screw Amazon. I don't even want anything to do with it. Like, uh, sticker-wise, we... Yeah, we don't do hardly anything. Like even to date, we don't do like anything on there. Um, but it has come a point where this comes full circle now that if you have an entire brand, and you you almost have to be on Amazon if you're a big enough brand, just because you're gonna miss out if you don't. And that's different than I'm gonna go build a brand on Amazon. It's very very different. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, like right now it's like the big trendy thing. I mean, I, there's courses upon courses upon courses of how to do this Amazon thing. And so do you recommend, I mean, to somebody who listened to this wants to start an Amazon business, it's a popular thing for a young guy that just graduated college, or I hear it all the time. People come to me, hey, got this idea, I want to start an Amazon business. What are, you know, maybe some of those things that you would tell them are must-knows or must-dos? Mm-hmm. And then follow-up question on that is, what's some of the popular um, ideology out there about doing an Amazon account that you would tell them to steer away from? So, um I'll leave with the, that, that. So to, to steer away from right now, if you want to pay somebody to teach you about Amazon, you're going to have to go through a bunch of garbage of people that have taken courses and are now reselling it and all this other stuff. So realistically, just stay away from that stuff. Um, you can go to the very, very basics and figure that out. I mean, you, obviously you look at Amazon and what they want and they want what everybody else wants, which is they want the best product to be to the, be- the person that wants it. Like if you get on there and you're looking for something for a cat, they'll tell you what should be the first thing you should get for your cat because that's what they know. And so long as you're supplying somebody with the actually thing that they should want or need for their cat, you'll be golden. Um, but as far as going on to, to Amazon to build a business or to start the business on there, I, I wouldn't do it at this point. Um, I think you've missed the boat. That's where I'm at. You know, hundreds of people will tell you otherwise. Um, I I just wouldn't. Unless unless you have an entire brand that you're able to plug in that, that has, has, you know, the ability that other people can't just knock it off and rip it off right away, then then maybe it'll be time, a good time to put it on there. But I mean, I have I have we did a, a this magnet a magnetic thing we put on refrigerators, and we were the very first person to market. We launched it on there. We did like thirty thousand dollars a month, and and it was really cool and it was really simple. And now I've got fifty people selling the exact same stuff. I if I wanted to actually get them off of my listings, which what they're doing is is totally illegal. Uh, selling it as if it's my brand. Oh, sure. Then I've got to file lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, and it's just not worth it. I mean, yeah, the fights aren't worth it. The fights just it. aren't worth it. And so, unless you have something completely proprietary or, or a massive brand, I wouldn't. So, how have you been able to distinguish yourself? Because you've built you. That's your genius. Is you know that's why I wanted to interview you. Is you are an internet marketing um, wizard. Essentially, you have really mastered this. So, what was that next step then? Minus just selling stickers on Amazon. What what process did you go through? to learn and what did you end up doing from there? So uh, the internet's ever evolving. Um, For sure. And so, I mean, what I'm preaching today will not work in a year. It just won't. Um, And so, so I just keep adapting. I keep changing. I keep, I keep looking to what the future is, looking at where people are. Um, It sounds weird. A big part of what I try doing is just taking a step back and saying, okay, I'm standing here with this really cool stuff. Where are the people that want this stuff at? And it changes. And, and, and you know, three years ago, everybody that wanted that stuff, they were on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And that's where I could put it safely without getting destroyed by all my competition and everything else. And now it's not so much. Now, if, if it's somebody that's, you know, 40 to 65 plus, they're all on Facebook. That's where they're at now. And, and so I can just take my same thing and I can plug it into Facebook. If they're young, if they're the young generation, they're on Snapchat. Take it and plug it into Snapchat. And so the more you just look at where things are at from like as high of a level of picturing as you can, you'll just kind of see what direction you ought to go. 
Does that well, make sense? Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. And one of the th systems that you use that we've talked about in detail, you're kind of helped me a little bit with this real estate course I've created um, is through ClickFunnels. Mm -hmm. That's where you sell a lot of, you're part of a very prestigious club within that company. Most people listening to this, you've probably heard of ClickFunnels before. It's basically a marketing system, uh, a distribution marketing system to get your product to clients. But um, you are part of the two, is it called the Two Comma Club? Two is that comma correct? Club, yeah. yeah. And you're one of the original, probably 35, I think, members of that club. Explain a little bit why that's significant or what that means to be part of that. Okay. Um, so, so first of all, ClickFunnels is more like, it, it's a big software that you can build landing pages on and basically run people through a process in order to make a purchase. Um, and so I was one of the first people to build an individual funnel that uh, basically took somebody from a lead from somewhere, from Facebook or from YouTube or wherever, put them in my funnel, and I walked them through this process and they made a purchase. And I did more than a hundred or a million dollars in revenue from one individual funnel. Um, so we did we did one, I think, I think it was like 35. I think we were one of the first 35 people to have one. Um, and then it was like four or five months later, we got our second one. Um, and then I, we were just talking about this. I've got uh, three more funnels that are over 750,000 that are probably going to hit a million this year. So. Wow. And so if people want to, is that uh, sustainable? Is that, you said the internet's always revolving mm -hmm. um, or evolving, I guess. Um, is that something that's going to, you think, be around for a long time, the ClickFunnels system? Or you think it's going to be evolving quite rapidly as well? Um, what's interesting about ClickFunnels um, and how they're doing things right now is that they're changing and adapting really fast also. Mm. And so as things are changing, I see it as more of a long-term solution um, because of what you're able to do with it. And it's not, um, yeah, everything, you can make the changes, a lot of changes in order to, to do it. So uh, as far as I can see right now, yeah, we're golden. Um, that said, in, in three years, maybe it won't be the case anymore. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Well, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, diving back into the internet marketing and stuff like that. Um, what's the common advice that you hear floating out there that um, you just kind of shake your head? I know you talked about like people telling, you know, taking those internet Amazon courses, but what's some advice that you always hear people giving about internet marketing that you just laugh at as somebody that actually understands it? Oh man, there's so much. Um, yeah, I mean, a big part of them are the, the internet gurus. I mean, there's, there's a big difference. So, so I hear from people all the time. I get emails all the time from people that are going to make my funnels better and that, oh my gosh, you need to do this. It's going to be so much better. And for the most part, I just laugh because they don't have a clue what they're doing. They're just trying to get their piece of your money. I mean, and so um, a big, if you're going to do it, jump in, start doing it, figure out what problems you don't know how to solve, and then find somebody that knows how to solve those problems. I mean, that's going to be the best way. I mean, you could, if you just want somebody to hold your hand and walk you through it, cool, go for it. <laughs> You're probably not going to succeed realistically if you need someone to hold your hand through the entire process. Mm -hmm. You've got to start figuring out the problems because that's where the money's going to be. Otherwise, you're going to end up on a boat like me where you're like, oh, yeah, I got handheld and walked into the prime time of, of Amazon. Yeah. And it's like, oh, anybody can do this. This is so easy. And then you get slapped once and you're like, screwed. I'm screwed. If I can't solve problems, you're screwed. And so just jumping in, doing the processes, and then if you get stuck in something serious, find someone that has the answer because there's always an answer. Perfect. And then you've kind of, I mean, you've really mastered this. You've really um, figured out, I mean, your life, give us an average day in your life because I want people to understand because <laughs> I'm a little bit jealous, not going to lie. But what, I mean, how many hours are you legitimately working per week right now, now that you have these systems set up on, on internet marketing? Um, I probably average 10 hours a week <laughs> for the last year. Wow. Um, that said, I've also, it's been like a lax year, um, business is doing well. It's just not compounding as fast as if I'm in the office. So, um, 2018 is going to be a huge year for me. So I'm spending a lot more time this year on it. Like 20 hours? <laughs> eh, 30. Okay. All right. It's getting yeah, up there. Yeah, I mean, it depends yeah. what the week like, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you got to leave early for the jazz games and there's stuff like that, but no, that's great. But, uh, no, yeah. I mean, it, it, it I have the total freedom to do whatever the heck I want. So. Yeah. So what challenge you, I mean, at this point, you've got this down. What challenges you now? What drives you to, you know, at this point, you have a really easy life going right now. Things are going great. What motivates you? What drives you? Yeah, I, I, it goes back to the same th thing, same thought process I kind of learned over the years is, is back in high school, I was selling stuff online and I was like, I'm the king. And obviously I wasn't. And then it's like, I'm crushing on Amazon, get kicked down. It's like, I was a king. Uh, no, I wasn't. And I saw the pattern and now I look at stuff and I'm like, no, I'm doing well. 
uh, I'm not even close to anything. Rem- I mean, I'm not a baller. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not I'm not playing at a level that I can sit back and be like, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's life's good. comfortable, but it's not like you're set for life at this point or right. anything like that. Yeah, like we went to a jazz game. It wasn't on my jet. There's a problem. <laughs> you, they always say you never want to be the one that has the jet. You just want to be the one that has the friend that has the jet. So maybe you and I were the two that did it right because we were just invited to go along. So. That's probably, that's probably true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and speaking of which, I know that was um, really fun and everything. What are some of the things that you have planned? Because you're an adventure guy. You um, race vehicles and different things like that. What are some of the adventures that you have planned coming up? Or what are some of those things that, you know, some of your whys that get you excited with these different adventures you want to go on? Man, you know, I, I almost separate them, which is kind of weird. I, I get a massive, massive high from making money. And so, so more than what the money does and stuff like that, I get a total rush of being like, holy crap, we just did 45 grand today and we didn't do anything. Like those give me such massive highs, but obviously it affords me the freedom. Like, I, like we're taking the, almost the entire office. We're all going to Disney World in March and we're going to go play and we're going to do stuff like that. And, and obviously race car season's coming up. So I'll be out on the track a bunch. Um, I, I'll, I'll love doing all that, but, but, uh, I definitely think that I get I get the biggest high from from drawing out some sales. from some stupid business model that's just going to crush it and then doing it. No, I totally get that. I mean, even when I was you know a little kid, I'm sure this is when you were selling stuff on eBay. There's just there's so much satisfaction when you get a sell uh, when you're first doing it. Especially, I know for me, like I got so lit up when I would sell meat or when I would uh, you know had a lemonade stand even as a kid or just those things when you like get somebody to come buy your product there's just it's a very addicting so yeah. I, I totally can get that well is there a part of you that I mean I guess I should ask first did you end up going back and graduating high school or are you still yeah. high school dropout well, um, I did go and take my GED test right right and afterwards it's like 50 bucks for them to file it or something like that <laughs> or didn't do it. and I didn't, I didn't do it so <laughs> it, it's not official I don't technically have a GED I did pass the GED um, I think I was a hundred percent actually. Um, but, uh, no, definitely. So what did, like if your kid came to you, let's say his junior year high school and wanted to drop out, what advice would you give him? Uh, I think would you it, let him? I think it depends on the person. Yeah, I, I would. It's their decision. Um, mm-hmm. me making them stay is probably not, I, I, I don't suggest go drop out of high school. I'm not going to suggest that for anybody for sure. because yeah, yeah. most you were people, lucky enough to have some influences come into your life that helped you out after. Absolutely. That, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, a lot of it came down to that training I went to too, that just, it completely rocked my world and, and got me seeing the yeah. bigger picture, if you will. Yeah. Um, but but I, there's a lot of, school sucks for some people. Uh, me, if, I didn't do well in school. I don't do well sitting there in a class listening to somebody tell me about something. I don't do well with somebody grading me on a paper that's not math because it's your perspective of something. Like um, I, so I dropped out, I went to college. Um, apparently you don't have to have a diploma to go to college. They don't ask you. Where'd you go to college at? Uh, UVSC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. So I dropped out, went to UVSC for a semester cause I thought I was going to be a lawyer. Bad. No. Um, and, uh, I remember taking an English class and them grading my paper and it wasn't grammatical errors. It was how I presented the presentation and I presented exactly how I wanted. And I got like a D. And I was like, nope, not doing this. And uh, I don't even think I went back to class. And I was like, no, this is not, this isn't even close to what I'm wanting to do. And, uh, well, it just goes to show, I mean, ClickFunnels is one of the hardest systems out there to me to figure out. Like I've, I, man, I read so many books and studied that thing for so much time and I'm still coming to you asking the most basic questions. And so it's, I think it is interesting. So many people, I've interviewed several people on this show that they learn differently than other people, right? And they have their own genius and their own intelligence, but sometimes that's not portrayed in school um, the way that maybe they feel like it is. I know in the episode, if you go back and listen to an episode with John Buck, he is a major league baseball player and he's a genius. He's one of the smartest catchers in baseball for, for a decade. Um, but he struggled in school because to him, the way they were teaching it to him, his mind was working a different way. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like maybe a little bit of a similar situation there. Um, so to kids that maybe are struggling in school, I know there are a lot of younger people even listen to this podcast. Um, what advice do you have for them? If maybe they're sitting in school and they're just like feeling like, you know, like you don't want to feel like a dummy, but you get a D in an assignment you feel like you did a good job at. What advice would you have for people like in that same situation? Man, take a step back and look at what you're good at and how you figure stuff out. That's what you, I mean, it, at that, at, at some level, it won't matter if you, if you are getting a D in something, but you're taking a step back and saying, okay, I got a D on this paper because of how this was portrayed, but, and you have a really clear vision of what it looked like. It doesn't matter what you got on that grade. It's never going to, unless you're going to go try getting a job somewhere that needs a high school diploma, yeah. you don't have to worry about it. 
Um, it just just figure out what it is that you're good at and start playing with that. And and I, it, yeah, start figuring out what. Yeah, I, I keep repeating no, it, but yeah, that's no, it. I love that. And so there's an art in that. So, well, dude, it's perfect. I love your story, man. From high school dropout to you got all these million dollar businesses going, and um, simultaneously. It's inspiring, and I think a lot of people are going to take a lot out of this. So thanks for spending the time, and I appreciate the friendship and appreciate the time today. Yeah, man. Thanks. All right. Thanks, my man.